At 10 o'clock, Ian Parkinson reporting. The Joint Chiefs of Staff in Buenos Aires say the Argentine cruiser, the General Belgrano, is presumed sunk in the South Atlantic. The news was given in a communique, details of which have reached us within the past hour. There's no word on the fate of the 1,000 Argentine crew believed to have been on board. From Buenos Aires, Joe Paley. The cruiser was hit by torpedoes yesterday outside the British defence zone southeast of Tierra del Fuego on the southern tip of Argentina. The Ministry of Defence said she had posed a serious threat to ships of the British task force. The communique makes no mention of casualties, but it's known that General Belgrano had about a thousand seamen on board. An earlier communique from the junta said other Argentine ships were standing by near the cruiser in case she needed help. The news of the probable sinking of the cruiser was broadcast almost immediately on radio and television as Argentines were making their way home during the evening rush hour. The only previous indication she was in trouble had come in a brief statement saying she'd been hit by one torpedo and had been damaged. Earlier this evening, Britain's Defence Secretary John Knott told newsmen in London that the attack on the cruiser had been fully justified. If there is a threat to our own ships and to our own men, we have no possible option but to respond to that threat. Our first duty is to protect our own men, and the uh, General Belgrano was a threat to our men, and therefore it was quite correct that she was attacked by our submarines. Mr Knott said the government's overriding aim remained a peaceful and lasting settlement for the Falkland Islands. Military pressure would never be an end in itself, but it formed part of the search for a solution. That's the news on Radio 1. It's two minutes past ten. And in case you missed tonight's football results, it was Spurs 2, Liverpool 2, although Spurs were leading 2-0 at one stage. Himself scored a couple of goals, uh, so at least we get one point out of that. On tonight's programme, we have sessions from The Crabs and Boots for Dancing, three tracks from Sulk, which is the new LP from The Associates, a couple of altered images, not, you'd be distressed to learn, the one with me singing on it, and a great deal more besides. From The Clash, Know Your Rights. This is a public service announcement. With guitar! Know your rights! All three of them! Number one! You have the right not to be killed! Murder is a crime! 
No, you're right. The Clash, of course, the current single, help you to follow shortly. And since I last spoke with you, I've uh, become a father for the fourth time. Florence, we haven't decided on the rest of the names yet, and she's bound to be called Flossie, I rather suspect. I've been trying to find records about Flosses and Florences, but without any success. Although I've got one uh, which I played actually about a month ago by the Paragons called, uh, called Florence, but it's such an awful recording, I don't think it'd be entirely fair. And I can't think of any songs with Flossie in them, except there was, uh, when Beachcomber used to write in the Daily Express years and years and years, Years ago, Captain Foul enough. One of his characters was endlessly whistling "Flossie is the girl for me." But whether the song actually really exists or not, I simply don't know. Anyway, my thanks to all of the people at Deben Ward at uh, Heathrow Hospital in Ipswich uh, who helped, particularly the trainee midwife. Typically, I haven't didn't uh, make a note of all of the names of the people who were there, but uh, the kind of people that you think, why don't they come round and have a meal with us? Of course, it'd be terribly embarrassing if you invited them to do so. A bit like a shipboard romance. From the passage, this is born every minute. <laughs> Sure as there is air, they think the world of us 
across the world of us, but there's something in the air, and we're disturbed, disturbed. They do a lot lying for us, they do a lot thinking for us, they do a lot starving for us, they do a lot living for us, but there's another living, it's not that we brands to this cross, but if they don't turn for our thinking, they'll do a lot dying for us. The show is very sad, they think the world of us, the world of us, but there's something in the air, and we're disturbed, disturbed, cause there's more than one bone every minute. And that's the flexi disc that came out with the recent edition of the Melody Maker from the passage. It's called Born Every Minute. And I know the standard thing to do after you've uh, after a child has been born is for the father to go out with his mates and get outrageously drunk, leaving uh, his wife behind feeling sore in hospital. Well, I'm not very good at that sort of thing, but I did stop off on my way home for a solitary Indian in rather a revolting Indian restaurant in uh, Ipswich. And uh, the people who were sitting there, a couple of blokes came in, and they were talking about moving furniture, I think. One of them had been pushing a piano down the Norwich Road in Ipswich, and uh, we fell to talking about Dal Tarkas, actually, because they'd never experienced one before and wanted to know what it was, and then um, I told them what I'd been doing, and the fellow bought me a drink, and I was rather touched by this, as a sort of entirely uh, disinterested uh, thing to do, and uh, I don't suppose for a moment that he's listening to the programme, I'd be astonished if he was, but thank you, sir, anyway. The first from the Crabs is called Love's Not That Great, Really. <laughs> can certainly pick them on this program you know those are the crabs from norwich excellent i think love's not that great really john cooper clark a distant relation i mean not of mine that's the name of the song nothing to do with me at all i only met him twice <laughs> So 
know I've played that quite a lot over the past couple of weeks, but it is wonderful. The Misunderstood, My Mind, from the LP on Cherry Red. And before that, John Cooper Clark, the B-side of the current single, A Distant Relation. And if you were listening to the programmes that we did uh, from Liverpool, I say we, I mean, obviously that's uh, Brian and Chris Lysett and myself, not the royal plural, not yet, but I'm working towards that. Um... Well, you may remember that we interviewed some people from an excellent magazine called The End, and uh, today I got hold of a copy of Volume 5. Rather disquietingly, it has a picture of me on the front, looking, I must say, rather grim. I mean, I assumed that in certain lights I didn't look too bad, but the photographs in this have convinced me once and for all that it's, uh, it's time to forget it. But anyway... Um don't let that put you off. Get hold of a copy of uh, Volume 5 of The End. It is great. There's also a rather long and tedious interview with me in it as well, but... Oh, I don't know. Read all about me. I'm terrific. I'm also on the sleeve notes of the Misunderstood LP. What more could you possibly want? From Shout uh, on Mercury Records, starting line. <laughs>
yes, we're going to romp and stomp the whole night through. Well, till 12 o'clock, anyway, and then I'm off to bed. That's Shout on Mercury Records, starting line. And the first time I played a record by Shout, I used it as a rather flimsy excuse for playing Shout by the Isley Brothers and being a creature of habit. Well, you know you make me want to... A minute exactly, but about three seconds because I'd forgotten they were separated on the record. I feel all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that I got my woman, I feel all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I think about you, you've been so good to me. You know you make me wanna shout <laughs> Shout now! 
First time I heard that was when I was in the uh, in the Royal Artillery, and it's one of those records when you hear it on the radio, and uh, that's where you heard most records in those days, of course. You thought, nothing can be this good. Those are the Isley Brothers and Shout, parts one and two, which I should have had edited together but forgot all about. And from Boots for Dancing, Style in Full Swing. street till it got that off time beat now it's a place where the swing cats meet 52nd street it's an endless woo where the tall red trumpets blow it's quite a thing when you're feeling low 52nd street debutantes who like the rhythm rocking make it their rendezvous Though this swing is absolutely shocking The mamas ain't blue cause the mamas swing too 
It's a world that's set apart. It's where swinging got its start. It's like the beat of a swinging heart. Two blocks from 50, you'll find the lift there, 52nd Street. Great stuff. That's Andy Kirk and the 12 Clouds of Joy, 52nd Street. And before that, a style in full swing from Boots for Dancing. Oh, clever stuff. Now a track from the old piece Sulk by the Associates. This is called Bap de la Bap.
Those are the associates and a track from the LP Sulk. A couple more before the end of the program. One's called Bap de la Bap, which sounds like something that producer Chris Lysett would say. <laughs> and from Altered Images and the LP Pinky Blue, not, I regret to say, the track on which I sing, Song Song Blue, despite the fact that there have been an enormous number of requests for this, but uh, instead, Little Brown Head. <laughs> Altered Images, and that's from the LP Pinky Blue, as you must know by now. Little Brown Head, the title of it. A wonderful LP. I recommend it without reservation. And in fact, I must, uh, to, to be perfectly honest with you, I spent a great deal of time over the weekend listening to Song Sung Blue, because I'd never heard myself singing on record before. Quite clearly, it's an experience which the majority of people don't have. And uh, it's terrific, and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of it. And yeah, I stand there with tears in my eyes, thinking, that's me, you know, and... The, and uh, um, my daughter Alexandra, who's heavily into altered images, although she's beginning to drift off into dollar, which I find a little worrying, but they're very hip anyway. So, um, as she comes in, and we have to listen to songs sung blues like four or five times in a row, and every time it sounds wonderful. And I can understand why it is that uh, when people make their own records, even if they only make 500 of them and only sell half of those, it's still a wonderful thing to have done. And it's another reason why I should continue to play as many of them as possible on the radio, despite getting slagged off by people like David McCulloch, or whatever his name is, from Sounds uh, on a fairly regular basis. Uh, from the Crabs, for example... Well, no, no, never mind. Let's <laughs> press on. Better not move into that. I was got explosive statements or just on their way. From the Crabs, please ask me out. I thought 
Pretty sharp program, I think. Book of T and the MGs and Time is Right, which is another one of those stacks reissues. Before that, the crabs, and please ask me out. Crabs very definitely go, as far as I'm concerned. From Boots for Dancing, nobody raves about the salt in the ocean. This, I believe, to be true. Boots for dancing and nobody raves about the salt in the ocean. That's what you think, pals. Men is the night we've stayed up until, well, small hours of the morning, raving about exactly this thing. From Richard and Linda Thompson, Walking on a Wire. You 
Just hand me that same old refrain I'm walking on a wire I'm walking on a wire And I'm falling I wish I could please you tonight But my medicine just won't come right I'm walking on a wire I'm walking on a wire And I'm falling Too many steps to take Too many spells to break Too many nights awake And no one else This grindstone's wearing
Richard and Linda Thompson, and that's from the LP Shoot Out the Lights on Hannibal Records. It's called Walking on a Wire. Nude Spoon's the title of the next from the Associates, and I'm pleased to be able to tell you that we have no such thing in our house. I've, they all wear little frocks that I've fashioned out of cambric. I think you'd find them rather attractive. From the new LP, Sulk. Associates, and that's from the LP Sulk, and uh, Nude Spoons, the title of it, and one more from that before we all go home. From Scritti Politti, the new single, this is available in both 7-inch and 12-inch forms, as uh, I so often find myself having to say. The 12-inch version is about nine and a half minutes long. It does go on a bit, I must admit. I think for the time being, until I can feel more courageous, I'll press on with the 7-inch version, Faithless. <laughs> Yeah. 
That's Scritty Politi on Rough Trade Records and uh, Faithless, and I do think that's a wonderful record. And I suppose uh, Deep Soul, although Deep Soul purists will uh, be highly incensed that I describe it as such. And if it means that there's going to be a Deep Soul revival, then I, for one, should be extremely pleased, because, one, I've got a lot of Deep Soul records that I've accumulated over the years, and, uh, two, it's something which I enjoy enormously. And Deep Soul buffs, if there are any listening, will, of course, be familiar with the names of Eddie and Ernie, and this is one of their records, one of my favourites of theirs. My copy is... I regret to say, press, pressed slightly off centre, but uh, try not to uh, let that worry you too much, because it is terrific. I believe she will. <laughs> Away from home 
Eddie and Ernie, and I believe she will, a record which was uh, originally issued on Chess Records. I mean, that's, it's on Chess now, I suppose. Once on Chess, always on Chess. And just to show you what a generous kind of chap I am, I've got a mate who uh, is obsessed, well, not obsessed with the work of Eddie and Ernie, but is particularly partial to it. And I did once find in a second-hand shop an Eddie and Ernie record which he hadn't got, and I hadn't got either, and I gave my copy of it to him. Isn't that... I, am I not a wonderful person, don't you think? That's called uh, I Believe She Will. And from uh, The Crabs, this is Rape Rap. Come on, yeah, party style. Oh, come on, let's get in there. Are you yeah. invited? Yeah, because you were. Come on, let's get in there. Yeah. 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 Hey, did you bring a bottle? Yeah. 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 Crabs demonstrating that they're not all froth and post-pubescent angst, and that's called rape rap. And from Dennis Brown on Thompson Sound Records, a 12-inch Why Fools.
You may have seen uh, Ian Carr on television recently talking about Mars Davis and the records that Mars Davis made in the 40s with Charlie Parker. That was one of them from 1948, Merry Go Round. Before that, Dennis Brown on Thompson Sound and Why Fools. Boots for dancing, bend an elbow, lend an ear. <laughs> Boots for Dancing, that's called Bend an Elbow, Lend an Ear. And according to Brian, they're playing on May the 5th at Avant Garde in Stirling and on May the 21st at Edinburgh University. And our other guests on the programme, the Crabs, are playing on the 27th of May at the Jackard Club in Norwich. And from Angels 1-5, you may recall their session for us. I was very surprised, actually, they weren't snapped up by somebody after the session because I thought they were very good. They put out their own cassette single, though, which is called Cut and Dried. <laughs>
Angels 1-5, their cassette single, Cut and Dried, and another track from the Associates from their LP, Sulk, and this is called Skipping. <laughs> The Associates, and that's from their new LP, Sulk. That's the chair creaking in the background as I try to find a more agreeable position to sit in it. And that's called skipping. I do a lot of skipping myself, as you can imagine. Uh, we're trying to encourage the guests that come on these programmes these days to record their own version of You'll Never Walk Alone. The kind of plan is that eventually, after we've got about 30 or 40 different You'll Never Walk Alones, we'll put out an, an, an LP of them or something like that. It's quite, quite a nice idea, I think. It'll probably come to nothing. But there was once, when I was uh, a young lad, an LP which had something like 14 different versions of the St. Louis Blues on it, and I always, uh, always liked that as a concept. So, the, uh, on tomorrow night's programme, our guests, incidentally, are Blue Poland and Michael Smith, neither of whom do you'll never walk alone, but the crabs do. <laughs>
Crabs, and that's called Stalemate, preceded by their version of You'll Never Walk Alone. And when I saw the band playing in Norwich, um, they were, I suppose, politely received, but it wasn't an enormously enthusiastic reception. But I thought they were excellent, and I think this uh, session, um, you know, uh, justifies my faith in them. That sounds a bit patronising. It isn't intended to be so at all. Jeanette Purcell, lead vocals and percussion. Yeah, Sarah Smythe, or Smith, perhaps, backing vocals and percussion. Karen King, backing vocals and percussion. Then uh, Phil M.B. drums and Dave, David Cuff on uh, bass and percussion. This is from uh, Where's Lisa on Glass Records, a 12-inch EP, Tutorial. <laughs>
Where's Lisa on Glass Records, a 12-inch, and that was called Tutorial. Kid played this on his programme earlier on this evening, and where Kid goes, the rest of us can but follow. The Fun Boy 3. <laughs> Fun Boy 3 and the telephone always rings, the current single available in, you know what I'm going to say, I don't need to say it any longer. And uh, one of the, th these days I must confess that, uh, I mean, I've got a television at home, rented television and so on, but it's getting to the point where I hardly think it's worth having it. Any I mean, if, you know, if it wasn't rented, I'd sell it. I sell it anyway. And the rental company will never know, not for months. And uh, if it wasn't for the football and for this weekend uh, brief encounter, which I'd never seen before, which I thought was actually about ten times as erotic as things which are supposed to be erotic, uh, I think I'd get rid of it. And I was on Pop Quiz, too. I said it wasn't actually on Pop Quiz, but I was the answer to one of the questions, and uh, nobody got it. <laughs> That's one way. People have ways of making you feel very, very small, and Robert Plant did, in my view, an appalling imitation of me. But uh, thanks for trying, Robert. Anyway, a bit of a boost. Boots for dancing, and this is Get Up. This programme's all about me tonight. I apologise for that. Tomorrow night I won't even mention myself. Get Up. <laughs>
get up the title of it, and that's the uh, last from Boots for Dancing for tonight, and from the LP by Fair on Slash Records, currently one of the hip American labels, and an LP called The Record. How do they do it? I don't care about you. <laughs> That's fear, is it? Yes, it is fear from the LP, The Record, I Don't Care About You. And to end tonight's programme, Altered Images again, and from the LP, Pinky Blue, Good Night and I Wish. What a charming thought.
wonderful stuff. That's Altered Images from the LP Pinky Blue. Good night and I wish. Perhaps on tomorrow night's programme I'll play you Song Sung Blue again. I know you'd like that a great deal. That's the end of tonight's programme in which you heard sessions from Crabs and Boots for Dancing. <laughs> Tonight, my br- uh, no, tomorrow night, my brave ones. Sessions from uh, Michael Smith and Blue Poland, but Radio 1 transmitters are now closing down until 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, when we'll be joining Radio 2 until 7 o'clock, and then Mike Reed will be along with the breakfast show. Is this right? Aren't they in the middle of a river somewhere or something? Three men in a boat? Is this the right thing? Or I got the wrong week? I don't know. How to read the Radio Times. It's midnight, and welcome to those of you listening on VHF who've now joined us. This is Charles Nove at the Radio 2 News Desk. The headlines, Argentina says the cruiser torpedoed on Sunday night by a British submarine is thought to have sunk. Task Force helicopters have also sunk an Argentine patrol boat. The QE2 is to carry reinforcements to the Falklands. Mr Pym is home from the United States, and there's no sign of any progress towards peace. The military junta in Argentina have announced that their only cruiser, the General Belgrano, is presumed sunk in the South Atlantic after being torpedoed by British submarines on Sunday night. One local news agency says its crew of about 700 may have had time to abandon ship and there are reports that lifeboats have been spotted. So far, the Ministry of Defence in Whitehall has neither confirmed nor denied the Argentine statement. Our correspondent, John Thorne, says the General Belgrano put to sea eight days ago. From Buenos Aires, here's his report. The military communique announcing that the General Belgrano was presumed to have sunk came some 18 hours after the Argentine command acknowledged the British torpedo attack. In the meantime, official information had been brief, although an official news agency hinted that low cloud and the cruiser's radio silence were hampering searching Navy ships. Later, a retired Argentine admiral said that the loss of the General Belgrano was not a real strategic blow, and he added that any loss of trained naval personnel would be more serious than losing the warship. Another clash between Argentine and British forces in the South Atlantic came within 12 hours of the attack on the General Belgrano, according to the Ministry of Defence. It happened early on Monday morning when British helicopters sank an Argentine patrol vessel and damaged a second boat. No damage was reported to any of the helicopters. The Defence Secretary, Mr John Knott, has given a fresh warning that the government will not tolerate any interference with British forces in the South Atlantic. And he told newsmen in London that the attack on the General Belgrano had been fully justified. If there is a threat to our own ships and to our own men, we have no possible option but to respond to that threat. Our first duty is to protect our own men and the uh, General Belgrano was a threat to our men, and therefore it was quite correct that she was attacked by our submarines. Mr Knott said the government's overriding aim remained a peaceful and lasting settlement for the Falkland Islands. Military pressure would never be an end in itself, but it did form part of the search for a solution. More men and ships are to be sent to the South Atlantic. The Ministry of Defence have announced that several more vessels have been requisitioned, including the Cunard liner, the QE2. It will carry troops, and it's to have a helicopter platform fitted. And the 5th Infantry Brigade has been put on standby to join the task force. The brigade of around 3,000 men includes the Gurkhas, the Scots and Welsh Guards. The Foreign Secretary, Mr Francis Pym, is back in London after his latest round of talks on the Falklands crisis in the United States. He's expected to report to the Prime Minister later this morning. Here's David Koss. Mr Pym's returned with no specific proposals and not much optimism, according to government spokesmen in London. In diplomacy, as with military force, it seems that the British government is content for the moment to let the Argentine government stew. Mr Pym said before he left America that he didn't mind what happened to the junta. He's waiting for it to have a change of heart. And he said that he didn't want to get Argentina out of the Falklands with a fight if he could avoid it. So the only new pressure to which Mr Pym's likely to look forward when he reports to the House of Commons is the possible stepping up of economic sanctions by America and Japan. Well, that won't satisfy Labour. They want far more attention paid to the United Nations than Mr Pym gave it during his visit. 
Other news now. Polish riot police have used batons, water cannon and tear gas to break up a demonstration in Warsaw. Our correspondent says that clashes between the police and some of the 15,000 demonstrators continued late into the evening. The protest was in support of the suspended trade union Solidarity and in defiance of a ban by Poland's military rulers. Warsaw Television reported that several dozen people had been arrested and would face trial. It said there had also been disturbances in Gdansk and a few other cities. At home, nearly 40 people were injured at Scunthorpe when a stand collapsed during the filming of the BBC television series It's a Knockout. About 500 people were watching the contest from a stand at Normanby Hall, a council-owned park. Two of the injured have been treated for fractures and the rest suffered cuts and bruises. Wet and blustery weather ruined the May Day holiday for many people. There was snow in parts of Scotland and gale force winds have caused havoc in northern England. And the weather forecast, northern areas will be windy with frequent showers falling as snow on the hills. Southern areas will have some sunny spells and scattered showers, but it'll continue cold everywhere. That's all for now. The next news on Radio 2 will be at one o'clock.